All right. So let me share my screen. So today we're talking about procrastination and it's something that all of us can relate to it, right? During the weekend, how many people put you procrastinate on any tax? Like you set it aside for later. Did anyone procrastinate during the weekend? Because I know I did, yeah. I got the job done. Yeah, Hillary. He procrastinated as well. Yes, Go on and speak. Yes, you think if I am if I am okay, so was that a mistake? So so procrastination is something that a lot of us do. But before we start talking about what procrastination is, we have some words here. We have procrastination, we have delaying, waiting, and postponing. These words, these four words, are they, are they related or are they completely different? And in what way are they similar? So you can just like tell us, is there any difference between you delaying a tax and you procrastinating? Or you waiting for something to come up or postponing it altogether? How are they similar? How what are the differences between these words? Anyone? Or should I start calling names? Are you guys here with me? Can you hear me? Okay, you can hear me. So, Addison, would you like to speak or just say a little bit about these words? Okay, so let me repeat. So, I said we've heard about procrastinating, we've heard about delaying, we've heard about waiting, postponing. These words, I assume, they are not new to us. But can you just tell me how they are similar or if they are completely different from each other? Okay, so Daisy, go on. Uh, hello. So I think I can say something about the difference between procrastinating and postponing. So procrastination, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like a bad habit. It's a problem when you... Mm -hmm. Put, when you put things off instead of doing them, mostly probably because of fear of failure of, or feeling like you don't know how to do it. But postponing, um, it means to schedule something for a later date, like setting it aside for a specific time. So yeah, that's how I see those two. Yeah, that's great. Yes, and um, who else wants to share their opinion about these words? Any of them, it would be delaying anyone if you like. Who else wants to go on? Okay, so let me just continue since nobody else wants to share their opinion. So with procrastinating, with what Daisy said, it always comes with fear of um, maybe failure or something. Initially, it was thought to be um, when you procrastinate a tax, it means you are just being lazy. But now people have like realized that procrastination is very different from laziness. They are two completely different things. Then you can be delaying a tax and it could be because you are procrastinating. But not all delays means that you are procrastinating on a particular tax. Then the waiting as well. So all of these things, a person can delay a tax, you can wait or defer the tax to another time. It could be because you are procrastinating. But if you are doing something like that, it does not necessarily mean that you are procrastinating. 
Do you understand what I said? So delaying, waiting, and postponing, they are all different forms that people procrastinate. But when we do those things only, it does not really mean that we are procrastinating on the tax. Because with procrastination, it has to come with other factors too. So you can decide to postpone a tax. For example, you can decide to postpone a meeting maybe because um, the person that is supposed to chair the uh, meeting is not around or for any other reasons. But with postponing, it's always associated with different other factors. And that's what we'll be looking at today. And why we say everyone procrastinates does not mean that everybody is a procrastinator. Being procrastinating is the very different from you being a procrastinator. When you are when they've labeled someone a procrastinator or you realize that you are a procrastinator, it has to do with you doing it repeatedly such that it has negative impact on the person's overall productivity. So let's go on to the next slide. So here we have what procrastination is. And procrastination is the act of voluntarily delaying or postponing a tax, despite knowing there will, be, there will, like, there will likely be negative consequences for doing so. So that's what procrastination is about. And yes, everybody procrastinates, but that does not mean that we are procrastinators. And why is it important for us to look at, okay, so why is it important for us to look at this? Like, why should we pay concern to um, procrastination? The first thing is that it reduces productivity because once someone is procrastinating or you are delaying, in a tax, at the end of the day, it reduces productivity because the, the tax will, like you become, you feel overwhelmed at the end of the day and panic can set in. And most times when you are completing a tax that is very close to deadline, you may not do adequate checkups, you may not put in your best to it, and it results in poor quality of work. So because of these things, we don't want all of these things to be happening. So that's why we have to pay attention to our, um, to procrastination and just like how we've talked while well, we've um, talked about time management they come hand in hand so also procrastination it damages reputation and also leads to missed opportunities when someone is procrastinating consistently then as as time goes on they will be known to um, be someone that they are unreliable because if you give them tax to complete you just find that they will not get it done and at the end of the day, it's all you lead to mixed opportunities, both in personal life and even professional life as well. And persons just be behind. Now we have the procrastination wheel. What's the circle? Procrastination is like it is a vicious circle in the sense that it just goes round and round and round. So the first thing is when you have it, when you have a tax to do. Then you procrastinate that okay i'll do this later and then instead of doing that particular thing maybe out of um fear of failure or you're feeling inadequate or you don't even know how to get started on it maybe it's just too much to do then you decide to you can some people decide to do things they know they are comfortable with maybe cleaning the house some can decide to scroll on their phone and any other thing so along the line, when the, you procrastinate on a particular tax, they'll start feeling guilty about it. Then as the deadline to that tax approaches, panic starts setting in. And once there's panic, they'll sometimes they'll try to get the work done. And if at the end of the day, they're not able to get the work done, they'll start making up excuses as to why they're not getting it done. And then afterwards, they'll still procrastinate again. And the circle just continues from procrastinating, feeling guilty, panicking and then making excuses on and on and on and once you find yourself in this particular circle you should be aware like it's possible that you're a procrastinator so yeah now we have different factors that lead to procrastination but before we talk about the factors that lead to procrastination can somebody share like i know like a lot of us procrastinate but that does not mean we are procrastinators well, just from um, maybe during the weekend, was there any particular tax that you procrastinated on? Or you can just look back, maybe if, um, last week, is there any particular tax you procrastinated on? And what led you to procrastinate? Why did you procrastinate on the tax? Anybody? So what are some of the factors that lead to you procrastinating a tax?
Okay, go on, Gabriel. Okay, uh, so one of the things is uh, like uh, missing some details, like sometimes I don't submit things until uh, the last moment because I fear that I've missed something and maybe I think I'll find it uh, if I wait until the end. Okay, so you are trying to like get the job done, you are trying to make it perfect before you submit. Yeah, sometimes. Okay, sometimes. So that's why Gabriel procrastinates, trying to like perfect the tax, just like that. Any other person? Hilary? Um, uh, so for me, sometimes is the uh, the the um the challenge of getting started with the task. So um you don't know where to start, so you like putting it off after a while so that you can maybe uh, maybe in future you'll 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 know where to, to get started. Figure it out. Yeah. So you don't know how to get the job started. So you just set it aside and then in the future just be like, oh I'll get it done. So any other person wants to share? Before we look at some of the factors I put together. Daisy, your hand is still raised up. Do you want to share? Um, okay. Uh, I didn't mean to raise my hand, but I, okay. I my reason for procrastination sometimes is like Hillary's when I, I am not sure how to get started. So I push it off trying to fully understand everything first. Yeah. Okay. So you, you don't know how to get started. Then you set it aside for you to get all the information you need before you get the work done. All right. So, and when, when you are procrastinating, like when you are doing this, what other things do you indulge in during that period? This year, I'm still talking to you. Uh... Usually, I just um, I just experience the stress. Yeah, really, there's nothing else I do but stress about it. Yes. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So let's look at some of the factors that lead to procrastination, along with um trying to get um trying to be perfect, like um Gabriel said, or you just don't know how to get started, like Hillary and this is it. So here, the first one we have is the fear of failure. The fear of failure, like you know you have to do something, but you just don't know how to do it. And then you are afraid of you doing it the wrong way and then failing altogether. So that one keeps someone from getting the work started and then just keep on putting it to later, to later. Maybe you understand it better later. But then just realize that at the end of the day, time is just wasting. The time you are trying to okay, well maybe you understand it later. You could have just used to ask for help or, and get the work done. And there are some times that you just, you think you, you don't even, you have no idea on how to go about the job. Or you just start from somewhere and then you just figure it out along the line. So the, the fear of failure, then perfectionism, just like how Gabriel said again, trying to like perfect the job, then you just, okay, I'm not yet, um, I'm not yet done. So you just set it aside, the deadline is still there. I'm not yet done, I'm not yet done, I want to add this and that and that. And before you know, time is going, you're procrastinating on the tax. So perfectionism is another reason. Then lack of motivation. So lack of motivation is a major factor that leads to procrastination. Then the next one, we have poor time management skills. So here, it has to do with the time management and we've talked about that. And I believe we all now to like manage our time. We are getting better with managing our time now. Am I correct? You can use the reaction if you feel you are getting better at managing your time. Oh. I mean, why do you use that reaction? So, um, the next one we have overwhelm and indecision. Just to respond, okay, okay. 
So we have overwhelming indecision. And then we have lack of clear goals or direction on how to get the work done. So these are some of the factors that lead to procrastination. Then um, avoidance of discomfort also is part of it. Then the next thing, we have different steps in overcoming procrastination. The first thing is we have to be realistic and know your why. Like, why are you doing a particular task? Why are you interested in doing this challenge? Why are you interested in applying to this opportunity? Why? Why? Once you figure out your reason, it will motivate you. And as we've seen, like one of the factors that leads to procrastination is lack of motivation. But once you understand the, your why, that should motivate you. And once you are motivated to a larger extent, if the reason why the person is procrastination, procrastinating is due to lack of um, motivation, with that, they'll get motivated to get the job done. Then the next thing is apply the five minute tool. So with this tool, it's usually applicable for people that just don't know how to get started, or even if you're not getting motivated for any other reason. So the five minute tool is whatever it is you want to do. Once you already made your schedule, then if you feel like setting, like procrastinating on just tax, just say, okay, I'll work on this tax for five minutes. And if you realize that once you've just started, like for those five minutes, once you've started, you end up getting it done. Like you just end up working on that particular tax, maybe for longer period, even for 30 minutes, for one hour and the like. And we've looked at the Pomodoro technique that we can also apply here. So apply the five minutes to Another one is to set up reward punishment system, system, just like we talked about in time management. So once you've made your schedule and you, have, you follow through your schedule, you can reward yourself with something. And if at the end of the day you realize that you did not get the, when the job done, maybe you have any other punishment system. Maybe it's about um, not playing video games or any other thing you enjoy doing. You just use it to punish yourself and you to reward yourself accordingly to. So the next one is to get organized. <clears throat> to get organized, all of these fall under time management. Then we have act for help. So like how this is mentioned, like not knowing how to get started. So here you have to just ask for help because most times what keeps people from getting started or getting the job done is just not knowing where to get started. So here you can just ask for help. You can reach out to your peer, you can reach out to your colleague, your mentor, ask for help. People that have done the particular tasks before or have more experience than you do. Then get rid of guilt. Because once you procrastinate and then the panic and you start feeling guilty about not completing the tax, you should realize that we are all we all procrastinate. So it's not like you are the only person, you are not alone in this. So get rid of the guilt and just get the job done. Then become a groupie. So this one is like, this one helps with motivation. Once you have um, people that you work with, that you also work, maybe a team. So you you know that you don't want to let them down and maybe all of you are working on similar tasks. You get this thing done together. So with that, to motivate you to work. So those are some of the um, ways to overcome procrastination and you manage your time effectively. So, yeah, so overcoming procrastination, those are some of the ways you can overcome procrastination. So from this one, how many did I list here? About seven or eight ways to overcome procrastination. Which one do you think is like you are most likely to go with? Which one do you think, which one are you most likely to apply moving forward? Hello. Okay, Hilary. Uh, the, mo the most realistic for me to apply is one, one, two, and the last by applying five minutes rule mostly. Which one? Applying five minute rule and being realistic on on what I can get done and breaking the habit. Okay, so apply the five minutes rule. And why do you choose those ones? So, so for five minutes rule is because uh, um, 
to just to get started um there's a lot of time i have maybe just keep uh, researching to know how to do it but uh, you may get a lot of knowledge but you you haven't even written anything down to it. so if i just put like five minutes and start it i'll i'll be motivated to go on and uh maybe figure out afterwards yeah that's true okay so the five minutes rule then um who else will which one you have to go with abdurrahman abdurrahman are you there Sorry, I couldn't hear the question. My internet is breaking. Okay, but can you hear me clearly now? All right, so I guess you cannot hear me clearly. Let me call another person. So, Admasu. Admasu, are you there? Okay, so let me call one last person and then we move on. Grace. Hello, Grace, can you hear me? So which of these, um... okay, you couldn't hear it, that's okay. So you can just put it in the chat box. Like which of these um, methods that we've outlined here are you most likely to use to overcome procrastination moving forward? I guess goes to another speak at the moment. So yeah, so these are some of the uh, methods you can use to overcome procrastination. And then we have the cognitive behavioral solution. And if you could remember when we started, this mentioned um, she when she was differentiating between procrastinate, uh, procrastinating and postponing and delaying and postponing. Yeah, if I get to it, so she said um, procrastination can come maybe the fear of failure. So from this, we realize that it's not just about um, not getting the job done, or it has to do with a is a cognitive behavior. So how can we go about changing this behavior? So the first thing is um, to change procrastinator behavior, you also have to change our mindsets, what we, our beliefs. So the first step is to identify the thoughts and the belief, why you should understand your why. Why are you procrastinating on that particular task? What is it? Maybe is it out of fear? Is it because you want to get a uh, job perfect? Or any other reason it, there is, so you understand your why. And then you, once you've done that, you should rephrase how you think about these things. So typically, people do procrastinate by saying, "I probably will like use phrases like that." And with this, you realize the way you view the task is as if you have to get this thing done. Like it's something like you just you. I think I could, and all of those things. So those phrases, they just don't like. Those are some of the words that people use to procrastinate. But instead of doing that, we can go with, I will definitely do this, not instead of saying I could or I have to. Because when you have that, I have to do something mindset, is just saying it is not something that you are motivated to do, it's something you just have to do. But here now, when you have, okay, I am confident that I can do a particular thing. So once you change your mindset and you change the phrase about how you want to get this job done, it comes a long way to in changing, um, in overcoming procrastination. So the next thing is procrastination is the grave in which opportunity is buried. This is what Edward Young said. And to a large extent, I, I believe it is because there are a lot of mixed opportunities once you procrastinate you not get the maybe you want to apply for jobs and you procrastinate on doing that you're not getting submitted you want to apply for grants you not get a lot of things you not get it done once more if you are procrastinating so yeah but before we move on to the challenge i would like us to look at a scenario and here i'll use um the 10 academy scenario so for example we have let's say 
if you have a colleague and um, okay just at at ten academy now you have a lot of tasks to do you have a lot of challenges especially from the technical aspect right so if you now find somebody say what should i give the person as a name let me say you have a colleague sarah that you are in this cohort together and then she has a lot of um, technical challenges to do as well as the careers challenge but then the submission deadline is on saturday well according to sarah when she was asked, she made mention that she was she has been doing the technical challenge tax. She has not had time. She has not even completed the technical challenge, and um, but she has not even started the career challenge at all. And her excuse is that she, like, she just don't know how to do the tax. She does not know how to get those things started. So I believe this is something that a lot of us can relate with. So what are some, like, from your experience, what are some of those things that you think Sarah should do for her to just get the career challenge done and for her to um, stop procrastinating on the technical challenge as well? What are the steps that you advise her to take? Hello, can you hear me? Hello, should I come again? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, so do you hear what I said or I should repeat myself? Hello. All right, so um, let's move on to the challenge. Okay, so let's move on to the challenge and let me share my screen. But before we move on, do you have any question on the presentation? Okay, so this is the, um, and here at the background, we have definition of procrastination and a link to an article by um, Professor Joseph Ferrari at the Paul University. You can look at that at your leisure time. Then we have why people procrastinate and there's a link here for inside the mind of a, inside the mind of a procrastinator by Tim Orban. So you can watch the video as well. So the tax here is that as Tim shared, so after you've watched Tim's TED talk, and it's quite interesting and really witty and full of humor, I, I believe you enjoy it too. So as Tim shared in his story at the TED talk, write your own procrastination story, why at Ten Academy too? Make it, make sure it is original and it captures the essence of your own experiences. Make it yours. So why sharing us your story emphasize the following. One, you should name the, the specific tax or challenge that you procrastinated on. Then you should highlight the particular elements procrastinated in that tax or challenge. For example, maybe you are working on a particular tax, then what is it exactly in that tax that you procrastinated on? Then the, sec the third one is how you felt, why work how you felt while working on it at the very last minute, probably you started working on it very close to the deadline, then how did you feel? So were the results positive or negative? Did you get the job done well, or you just did it anyhow and submitted just to get it done, or you didn't even get it done at, so, at all? So what were the results, positive or negative? Then the second question is in general, now not just um, the 10 Academy, but in general, what are the underlying reasons or triggers for your procrastination? So you should provide a list of four reasons 
with detailed explanation. Why do you procrastinate? So also you should reflect on the role of distractions in your procrastination. What five external factors or distractions often derail your focus and contribute to procrastination? So what are the things that lead to you procrastinating that distracts you from doing your task? Then in general, you should list four excuses or justification you use to rationalize your procrastination behavior to yourself. So you here yeah, you should be honest about the thoughts, patterns, or beliefs that enable your procrastination habit. It could be that, oh, I'll get the job done faster, maybe later in the evening, I'm more re relaxed in the evening, or I am more focused in the morning, so I'll get started in tomorrow's morning and then tomorrow's morning and like. So what are the excuses you give yourself? What well, how do you justify this behavior? Then the fifth one is in general, reflect on past instances of procrastination. Were there any negative consequences or mixed opportunities and explain them? So here is in general, not just the 10 Academy, like not relating to the first question, but just look at your past experiences. Like how is, uh, do you have any missed opportunities? How has procrastination impacted you? So we should explain that here. Then the sixth one is think about times when you successfully avoided procrastination. Then what strategies did you use? So list as many strategies you use and um, as many strategies as possible and should explain them. Then remember the goal of this challenge is not just to complete the task, but to gain insight into your procrastination habit and develop strategies for improvement. Take this opportunity to learn more about yourself and how you can better manage your time and responsibilities that is staying true, set, true to set deadlines without procrastinating on what you have to do. So yes, yeah, so once you've got that done, it should be a maximum of 10 slides to convert it to PDF and submit it on the on 10x. So yeah, and the deadline for the submission is on Saturday, 8 p.m. So I hope you don't procrastinate on this tax as well, and maybe leave it till Saturday morning before you get started. So yeah, so that is what we have on procrastination. So anyone, any question? Let me stop sharing. Okay, any question? Or should I read it again? So everyone understands what it is they are supposed to work on, what the challenge is about, and how to go about it. Okay, great. So let me stop sharing, and then we can... Let me stop sharing.